Did you have anything to do with the death of your husband? No. I would never do anything to hurt my husband. Did you hire anyone to kill your husband? Of course not. Alright, what's going on guys? My name is Chris, and today we will look at the life and death of Arturo Gotti. Although this is a widely popular tragedy in the sport of boxing, I want to shed some light on this case for the younger generation who may not know about Gotti's controversial passing. With that said, let's get into the video. Arturo Gotti was born in Italy, then later moved to Montreal before finally living in New Jersey. Turning pro at the age of 19, it only took him four years before capturing the IBF Super Featherweight title. Gotti, however, was by no means the best fighter of his generation. With convincing losses to Floyd Mayweather and Oscar de la Hoya, there is nothing to be argued about if he's up there with the all-time greats. He simply did not do well against top opposition. However, these shortcomings were forgotten as he left his mark to everyone through his trilogy against Mickey Ward, a boxing match that turned into brawls is what we'll often see from Gotti. It almost seemed like he was a boxer by choice, but a brawler by nature. This contradiction in Gotti's style always kept Ward guessing, and the three fights always had a different outcome, with Ward winning the first, and Gotti winning the next two. Fast forward after this, he would go on to lose three out of his seven fights after the last dance with Mickey. This eventually forced him to retire in 2007 at the young age of 35, after getting KO'd by Alfonso Gomez. This decision was also made due to his sustained injuries that affected his performance as a boxer throughout his career. In 2006, while Gotti was walking his dog, she saw a lady by the name of Amanda Rodriguez. A month after Gotti's brutal fight with Alfonso Gomez, which is the only fight that Amanda Rodriguez saw, the couple got married. Of course, there were talks between them about having kids, and sure enough, they would have a baby boy a year later. Just like most boxers, however, retiring from the sport usually leads them to an unhealthy path. We've seen boxers turning from muscular dudes to looking like the big show. However, some guys like Gotti took it to the extreme by filling himself with drugs, alcohol, and being charged with several violations as a result. The couple did not have a good relationship, according to Arturo's close friend Tony Rizzo. Although Gotti was portrayed as a chill and calm guy on the television, Amanda saw a different Gotti whenever he was drunk. They would fight, things were thrown, whether one person hit the other is still in question, but come on, we already know it happened. In 2009, the couple began talking about divorce, with Gotti not being with Amanda and his son. A court order ignited a separation between the two, but just a couple of days later, the couple were back together, happy and smiling as if nothing bad happened. In May of 2009, they went to Europe, then to Brazil, with Gotti signing a will, leaving all his properties to his wife and son, just in case something bad happens to him. After the trip in Europe, we now move to Porto de Galinhas in Brazil. What a perfect place to hang out and probably fix a marriage, right? Apparently not for the Gottis. In the night of 2009, July 10th, a family dinner turned into an ugly fight between the couple. Gotti threw Amanda to the ground and left with their son. He came back later and the crowd got involved. From here, Gotti did what he was known for, which was brawl with people. He got into a fight with four guys, and when they went home, Gotti seemed to have cooled down a little bit when Amanda suddenly told him that it was over. Amanda went downstairs after a while, saw Gotti on the floor sleeping, went back up to the room, then came back two hours later, finding Gotti cold and dead. Rodriguez called the authorities, but she was held in custody because of her suspicious actions. She was free three weeks later, after they ruled that Arturo hung himself with a strap. And this was when suspicions got even bigger for Amanda. She came out smiling out of prison, as if she was in the red carpet, ready to take pictures and autographs. Who in the world has this kind of reaction after losing her husband? After Gotti's death, Amanda and her son now has millions of dollars because of the will that was signed by Gotti. A private investigation was done by Arturo's camp, and they concluded that it was indeed a homicide done by strangling the world champion and killing him when he ran out of oxygen. 
with these facts established, let's look at some theories. If it was indeed a murder, the first thing that comes to mind is the size difference. Gotti, although drunk, was able to fight four guys just hours before and has already cooled down when they went back home. How can a 100 pound woman kill a partly sober boxing champion? There were no signs of foul play and the state of being drunk can possibly cover this up because of Gotti's inability to fight back. But we already know that the champ can fight even when he's drunk. The best case scenario for this is that Amanda strangled him while he was sleeping. But this act will probably cause Gotti to wake up and fight back, which will give hints of foul play after his death. Secondly, no one went into the apartment besides Amanda and Arturo, which kills the possibility of an accomplice, unless Amanda did something to cover this evidence up. Thirdly, why did Gotti sign the will to begin with? As much as we can suspect Amanda to be a gold digger, we can also suspect Gotti for signing a will with that much money at such a young age. He must have known that he'll be leaving soon, and it'll be Gotti himself which will initiate that departure. If it was a suicide, the most common argument is, why did Gotti's body fall in a different direction? If we look back at the photo, he hung himself in a wooden staircase, but ended up lying in a different place. Could this have been the authorities? Could they have moved Gotti's body after finding it? If this was the case, why was the blood not in the same place? They sure cannot move the blood. Secondly, if Gotti walked around at 160 pounds, there must have been some damage on the wooden column where he hung himself, but apparently there was not. There are also arguments with the purse strap not being long enough to wrap around Gotti's long neck or wide neck, and some questions on how durable the strap is to carry that much weight while it is hanging. This case will forever be a mystery, and I hope one day we'll get a logical conclusion. But I don't think that's ever gonna happen. There's a lot of theories out there. But we still haven't gotten the real answers. Amanda Rodriguez, as of 2013, has been living in Montreal, Canada, and has decided to reset her life there. However, she lives a private life these days, and I have no updates of her, unfortunately. Anyway, that was it for this video. Thank you so much for spending your time watching this story. And as always, take care, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.